Joshua chapter 11. And it came to pass, 25 times in the book of Joshua, it came to pass. When Javan, king of Hezron, had heard those things, what things? The attack, the killing, the victory, these nations that are fallen. And to the king of Shiron, and the king of Akishaph, to the kings that were on the north of the mountains, and of the plains south of Chinnereth. Now that's Chinnereth. It's interesting. It goes by three other names. Gennesaret, Tiberia, or Tiberius, or Galilee. So now you know where we are. We're up where northern Israel, Galilee, the Sea of Galilee, and the valley, and in the borders of Dor on the west. To the Canaanite on the east and on the west. And to the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Jebusite, in the mountains. These are all the nations they're supposed to get rid of. And to the Hivite, under Hermon, Mount Hermon, in the land of Mizpah. And they went out, they and all their hosts with them. Much people. So they gathered a whole union. They've gathered in unity. They've gotten all these nations together for one purpose. Let's kill Israel. Let's get rid of them. They went out, they and all their hosts with them, much people. Even as the sand that is on the sea. That's a lot. Sand upon the seashore in multitudes. With horses and chariots. Very many. It's a unity. It's a congregation of nations against Israel. It's going to happen again. And when all these kings were met together... They came and pitched together at the waters of Mermon to fight against Israel. This is history, this is today, and this is yet future. Everyone is against Israel. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Be not afraid because of them, for tomorrow, about this time, so that would be 24 hours. Will I deliver thee up? Well, I will deliver them up all slain before Israel. And thou shalt hog or hot <coughs> excuse me, their horses and burn their chariots with fire. It was funny, it was a mo movie. <laughs> chariots of fire. The Bible says burn the chariots of fire. They're to cut the leg of the horses. It's not to rely on the physical strength army, but God. And there are other things going on with beasts in these, in these men. So Joshua came and all the people war with him, Israel's war, against them by the water of Mirah, suddenly, and they fell upon them. They came up quick, no rest and just go, march. And the Lord delivered them into the land, hand of Israel, who smote them and chased them unto great Zidon, and unto Mesopotamia, Ma'am, and into the valley of Mesopotamia eastward, and they smote them until they left them none remain. They're gone. They're dead. As multitude as far as the sand on the side of the sea, a beach, they're gone. God got the victory. And Joshua did unto them as the Lord bade them. And he hawked their horses and burnt their chariots with fire. No war surplus. No spoiling. He destroyed them all. And Joshua at that time turned back and took Hazor and smote the king thereof with the sword. And Hazor before time was the head of all those kingdoms that we just mentioned Chapter 1, verses 1, 2, 3. He's the ruler. This is the main, and it's dead. It's gone. It's conquered. All these great nations of this world, when Jesus Christ comes back, if America is going to be here, I don't know if it's going to be, when Jesus Christ returns, it'll be put down. 
And there'll be one nation above all nations. That will be the Jews, the Israelites. There'll be one city above all cities. That will be Jerusalem. There'll be one place that, where Jesus Christ will set his throne. That's David's throne in Jerusalem. All other nations are going to fall. And they smote all the souls that were, that were therein with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying them. There was not any left to breathe. That's the first time breathe shows up in the Bible. And he burnt Hazar with fire. So utterly destruction, and on top of it, burn it. Why? Well, get rid of all the gods, get rid of all the imagery, the idolatry. And then if you burn the entire city in fire, anybody who was hiding out, instead of going searching for him in the rubble, just burn the whole city now. God said other destruction of these people. They're wicked. They're vile. Their cup has reached unto God, and God says judgment must fall. And they smoke everything that breathe, and that would be any animals, the people, and all the cities of those kings, and all the kings there of them did Joshua take and smoke them with the edge of the sword, and he utterly destroyed them. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded when we read Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, when you get in those people, now watch, here they are, the Hittite, verse 3, the Parasite, the Jebusite, the Hivite, those people were to be utterly and gone, utterly, not to be destroyed. And remember some of the things that God wrote in the, in the law through Moses, uh, thou shalt not see your mother's nakedness, thou shalt not see your father's nakedness, thou shalt not see you know, this person's nakedness, thou shalt not have bestiality, thou shalt not have men with men. And then he said, such were the nations that were your going. And the horse hawking here is there it was bestiality with their horses. And God's one answer to that poor horse is, huck it, kill it, cut its leg. Burn those chariots. Those chariots were, other, other than war chariots, they were given to gods. And other things were going on with them. And the cities were vile and wicked. In verse 13, but as for the cities that stood still in their strength, Israel burned none of them save Hazor only. That did Joshua burn. So there were cities they kept up. There were cities they did not burn. And all the spoil of these cities and the cattle, the children of Israel took for a prey unto themselves. Oh, if only, if only. See, the first city, Jericho, it was all God. And then we had the man, he took some gold, some silver, Achan, Took a garment. That wasn't time. Now, if Achan had not done that sin, three things, and was still living today, look, by the time we've got to chapter 11, he can get gold, he can get silver, he can get cattle. It was just Jericho was not the place to be doing anything or taking anything. Now it is. With the edge of the sword, unto they had destroyed them, neither left they any to breathe. As the Lord commanded Moses his servant, so did Moses command Joshua. And so did Joshua. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. So everything that Joshua is doing, you say, well, how wicked Joshua is. God commanded it. God wrote it down. God said, go in there utterly. And so if you've got a problem with Joshua, you got a problem with the Word of God. And all you're going to do is defend a bunch of wild, wicked sinners who don't want to have anything to do with God himself or the people of Israel. And these nations are gathering against Israel, and God had already put forth since Abraham in chapter 12 of Genesis, I will curse them that curse you, and here they're coming to receive their curse. Again, another thing that God wrote in the Bible. You curse them, I'm going to curse you. So Joshua took all that land, now it's their land, the hills and all the south country and all the land of Gosha and the valley and the plain and the mountain of Israel 
and the valley of the sand. So they've got the plains, mountains, valleys, rivers. It's theirs. Even from the Mount Halak that goeth up to Seir, even to Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon, unto Mount Hermon, you find that on the mount, map, under Mount Hermon, you find it on the map, and all their kings he took and smoked them and slew them. Well, this battle is kind of easy for God because they all gather themselves as one. And no matter how many you have against you, if God is for you, they're going to fall like kingpin. They're going to drop. All you did was put them in one place so God can do it through Israel. And Joshua made war a long time with all those kings. So it didn't take overnight. There was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel, save the Hivites, the inhabitants of Gibeon, all other they took in battles. So there was only one city that was peace. Everybody else fell. For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts, rebellion, resist, as if Pharaoh the king of Egypt in the book of Exodus that they should come against Israel in battle and be cursed. Cursed be the curses Israel. And he might destroy them utterly. He, God, through Joshua, that they might have no favor, favor, but that he might destroy them as the Lord commanded Moses. Again, it's written, it's written, it's written. It's the word of God. So evidently, thou shalt not kill does not go the military campaigns under God, Moses, and Joshua. Now you go about today as a, as a church, not under authority of God and Jesus Christ, but your own ways, and you want to take property in the name of God, which God has not ordained of you, now you're a murderer. That people called the Catholic Church is not ordained of God. It has nothing to do with the Bible. Matter of fact, everything they practice goes against the Bible. And God is not for them. But in the name of God, they would say what's going on here in Joshua is, is their church doing what it was never finished, the Old Testament, getting the land. For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts as Pharaoh. Verse 21, in that time came Joshua and cut off the Anakins. Those were the giants. Those were the giants when him and those 11 other men, one of them Caleb, came in the land, saw the giants, they were just as grasshoppers in, in their view. We can't win. And he cuts them off from the mountains. Do you know how hard that is for a battle? If you are in a battle and you are in a mountain, you have the advantage because your enemy's coming up and you're looking down at them. And if you got the high plane, they're the ones that've got to climb up and use their en energy and strength. And in war, the high country is the one that's got the advantage, but not when you got God against you. From the mountains from Hebron, from Deber and Anab, and from all the mountains of Judah, there are giants all over the place. And from all the mountains of Israel, Joshua destroyed them utterly with their cities. The cities that they said are built all the way to the heavens, the walls. Well, God, using Joshua, God destroyed them. Through the children of Israel. What, what fear was that? That caused 40 years in the wilderness to be wandering and dying. And Joshua goes in and kicks butt. And the only place that the, that the giants remained was in the Philistine area. But in the land of uh, Cana, they're gone. There was none of the Anakins left. In the land of the children of Israel, Cana, only in Gaza, Gath, and Ashdod, there remain. That's the Philistine territory. And that's where it would come Gath, that would come for of Goliath and his family. So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord said unto Moses. 
And Joshua gave it for inheritance unto Israel according to their divisions. That's the first time that word shows up. By their tribes and the land rested from war. And now the land has been finally conquered. Not totally all, we'll see as we get on, but the land has been conquered. Now it's time to give it to the 12 tribes of Israel. And now they got to go in and clean up. But Joshua has done all he's supposed to do according to the word of Moses and according to the word of God through Moses. And we're going to do a little recap of what's going on. And then we're going to look at the land being divided amongst the tribes and the cities thereof. But it's done. Joshua got the full victory that those 10 men of the spies back in Cajus Martinia said, oh, we couldn't do it. And chapter 11 then chapter 12, they did it with God doing it for them. As Joshua and Caleb would tell them, hey, we can do it. Let's go. And they're like, no, we can't do it. Let's stay. Victory. Let God go before you. 